Good tidings, all you beautiful individuals. Welcome back to League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you for a little bit of week four, six, seven, depending on what region you're following. Global power rankings going international 20 to 1 across the globe. And, you know, we're getting we're getting some consistencies, at least in the LCK and the LPL for sure, because they're so deep. But the one inconsistency is that third seed from the LEC because you know first and foremost on this list the Mad Lions whoosh, they're gone they're out they're out the top 20 maybe a nice playoff run gets them in but they are gonzo for now pretty much I think a lot of people are going to be feeling good I, I don't know if that's the right word or, or, or a fair enough word to use but you know happy to see the Mad Lions bounced out want to be proven again on them their squad what they need to do to bounce back after that last week in the lec taking their spot the heretics rolling on through the teo and squad rolling in to this list taking this spot at number 20 and it's not like you feel like heretics or leaps and bounce better than excel even mad lions all these kind of bubble four and five squads in the lec outside of that top two in europe it is completely wide open and it's that race right now where we're rolling with the heretics. I'm feeling like that potential, that what way that they can bubble up and build up to something better in this LEC as we get to this group stage. You know, best of threes, moving to best of fives eventually. That is what I am banking on and betting on having heretics at this spot in the power rank. RNG and Hanwha Life ahead of them. Stand put, RNG gets a good win. And then a bad loss to kind of stay put. Hanwha Life, they lost both series this week, but it was against D Plus and Gen G. So pretty difficult matchups. You know, legit contender squads, we say we're waiting until they match up against the best of the best. Hanwha Life, we're waiting for them to match up against the teams below them to prove that they're better than them. Because I think we know at this point that they're not a top four team in the LCK. But Grizzly continues to look pretty good. Grizzly does look good. It is something that you can build off of, which I guess right now, if you're Hanwha Life and you look at what situation you've got for yourself, you have to be banking on, okay, that's good for the future because you know what? This seems to be that lost year, that year where you will not have this roster, which actually has the pieces to do so, will not be able to catch up to the squads like Gen G or even one like D plus Kia, which we have right now, not quite exactly pushing all the way up to the top levels of the LCK. So still Hanwha Life looking at next year, that next project, you've got these contracts. Grizzly is improving, looking like that guy in the jungle can roll with that. That's that's at least progress because you're getting more out of him than you were getting out of Clint when he was starting, which very low bar uh but edg they climb up a few spots like rng you know they had a tough loss to thunder talk that went three games but they had a very impressive game three win against world elite who are one of the better teams in the lpl and most importantly series in series out now we're getting oozy highlight reels mark yes sir yes sir this is the oozy this is the god hand himself Stepping back onto the rift, they have gotten the legitimate performances coming through from Uzi, and not just in the individual aspect, but in how he looks around the team is the other factor for me that you always look for with a player of the caliber of that history. Someone like Uzi for this EDG organization, as you laid out, not exactly all the way through good stuff from them, but it is that big, important win against WE, who has been believe it or not one of the hottest teams in the lpl in the last two weeks picking up those wins so to stop that one good signs from edg we're also getting better performances out of fofo and uh all a for the solo laners for edg because listen this isn't just the uzi show this edg squad with leave on the roster was right up there as one of the top three teams in the regular season of spring so expect more out of the rest of the squad and again slowly ramping up to the point where edg could definitely be a legitimate threat in playoffs then a pair of the lcs squads golden guardians and eg both get bumped up a spot more so because you know matt lyons got flung out of here eg you know, the last loss against Cloud9 leaves you not feeling great. And Golden Guardians, I think it's really closed the gap. And EG and Golden Guardians, you could say 1A, 1B, or 2A, 2B right now in North America. 
the clash I want in the LCS is between those two squads to duke it out, find who is that next squad that we want to see challenge Cloud9, see if they can push into that type of territory. And the way that you're looking at it, evil geniuses, whether you're deciding it was, you know, a couple of mistakes, a couple of little things going here or there, the game gets out of control. You want that you know, that chance, that rebound to get against Cloud9. On the other side, Golden Guardians, with anything that we have seen since this MSI and since outside of that early weeks, where you do get that reminder that, okay, we're not enough to get by Cloud9 still, You've shown everything in this LCS about this improvement, about the chance that you can believe in this Golden Guardians roster to level up and get to somewhere that matters. And you maybe believe the same about Fnatic. Spot ahead of both of those squads who, again, the gap between uh, even Fnatic and Heretics, I think is pretty sizable. Again, we've harped on it, but this turnaround from Fnatic from last split to now has been absolutely incredible and even even more so than Noah and Trimby, the new bot lane coming over looking great. The difference in performance from the three returning members from last split is absolutely night and day. I don't know fully what changed within the team environment, but it is it is four thumbs up for them so far. And that's the incredible thing, because you know about these players, that they had this level of talent, the ones that are on the remaining roster uh, for this Fnatic team but you weren't seeing it come through and you had to start questioning whether they should be on Fnatic or this iteration, whether you have to retool, move around, all sorts of things. You don't usually see it turn around and the way that it did for these players is just all of a sudden, well, it looks like the environment, looks like everything is in that favor, that you are getting the true performance from these players and finding a way to even get not only just the true performance, but the optimal level of performance is that next tier and you better believe it that the fanatic uh you know stays from the rest of the split uh, from the beginning of the split are finding it but it's a big time one my man again the additions noah trimby in that bottom lane oscarant continuing to develop and hold his own in the lec that is the big strides for me for this fanatic squad Obviously, because of their poor performances in winter and spring, it's a very long road for this organization to get a world championship spot. But current form, they're right after G2 in terms of teams you would want to represent EU internationally at the moment. Weibo's a team at times you want to see at Worlds for the LPL, but at times they would be the most likely LPL team to completely flounder and disappoint, which is why they're down a couple of spots because... They lost that head-to-head -head series against WE. Hey, look, we love Weibo Gaming. I am un I am biased for Weibo Gaming. I'll put that right out in front. But number one, we do need to talk about, we do need to acknowledge kind of in the last couple of weeks, we have seen it be even more so and too much of a coin flip with the shy in these games. You're talking about, you know, every so often game one or game two, he is absolutely the star of the show, the one stealing, making the play. That is the reason why Weibo is going across that finish line and taking up an enemy nexus. But then the very next game or in the crucial game three, he's the one making these boneheaded plays that is costing that squad. And yes, that is the shy, live and die by him but it is certainly something to look at this Weibo squad and realize how else everyone else is playing you gotta tone it down just a little bit the shy we love you and i know that that's what makes you you we gotta bring it back a little bit and how about a guy like Zhao? because when he was on rng didn't matter if he was top lane or mid lane he was one of the headline players in the entire lpl and it feels feels like since he came to Weibo, he's kind of just fallen to the wayside and there's you don't even notice him in some of these games. He's kind of more so even falling into a facilitator type of, uh, of role for this team, which sure, he's got the skills to be able to do that, but we all know that at that optimal level, that push and push, that power that you need to get over the line, to be an elite team in the LPL and consistently be that elite team, you gotta have those extra carry, that extra firepower options. I would love to see Xiaohu dishing out more of that damage with that head-to-head -head world elite one against them there are a few spots up and i know they've fallen back a little bit from that incredible 4-0-5-0 start they've been reeled back to reality but still looking like a playoff contender team that can make some noise so they sit pretty there and then sandwiched in between again speaks to the difference in regions one world elite you know maybe the sixth best team in the lpl 
is still sitting higher than the number one team from the LCS. And I guess it's just because it was the last game of the week. But because of how badly they stomped EG, you kind of completely forget about the TL loss. Yeah, you pretty much do. And I guess it is one of those symptoms of where it fell in the week that we are forgetting about that. And overall, it is still one of those ones where you can find and nitpick a couple of things that you didn't like or you want to keep working on if you're Cloud9, which is important, obviously, even at the very top of it, but still feeling confident in them as the very best team at that tippity top of the LCS mountain. As long as they've got Berserker and Berserker is enabled to keep doing Berserker things, it's going to be Cloud9 sitting atop the LCS. It's a return to familiarity. For D plus Kia as they get back into the top 10. I know they get 2 0 by T1, and then you have this challenger status of the Kwangdong Freaks. Can they step into that next echelon of LCK tier? No, because Showmaker gets Tristana two games in a row, and this guy looks like the best Trist in the LCK, and that's with Faker and Chovy having played it a few times. And this is with Faker having some carpal tunnel issues at this point in the season, looking over at Chovy and seeing what's happening for him and looking over at Showmaker. You're thinking, oh boy, baby, it is spicing things up in the LCK mid lane right now. And spicing things up is D plus Kia, picking up a little bit of heat, a little bit of results in the LCK to bring your attention back to them and what is possible for this team. I think we've looked at, you know, looking what is that ceiling we had Hanwha life and where they are and what they need to prove. I still think D plus is in that territory. And, I, uh, you know, I've kind of wrote them off a little bit and kind of falling in that lull type of uh, middle part of, of, you know, that spring territory. But looking at what we've seen from them now, seeing these type of signs, seeing Showmaker get that type of games on Tristana, I'm starting to believe that this is a D plus Kia that can challenge that top tier once again in the LCK. And you know, I know Nautilus isn't the most exciting jungler, but seeing Canyon play something that's a little off meta, at least in the jungle role, I know support Nautilus is picked all the time. That's just when this guy thrives though. Even a pick he's probably only played once, it looks like something he's played hundreds of games on. Oh, you introduce a little bit of chaos and Canyon is a certified killer there in the jungle making sure i don't care if he's on that nautilus he is a killer out there in the jungle i do want to give a special little shout out as well to kana in the top side i think this little turnaround this little win for d plus kia he certainly showed those strong signs that we know he can be in that top side for d plus g2 continues to dominate the lec eight and one finish their best ever in the round robin stage the problem is Cracking up any higher in this list, the LPL and LCK are just too good. Maybe they can get up another spot if TES continues to kind of flounder a little bit, but it feels like ninth or eighth is really the highest G2 can possibly go, even if they run through the entire LEC bracket. Yeah, we can massage, we can be, you know, experimental, we can be challenging in how we work out this global power rankings, but there is no way to shuffle it and be legitimate and have G2 any higher than this type of position because as you outlined, it's not really about what G2 is gonna prove to us, it's what we have been proven with these other LPL and LCK squads at this point in time, specifically actually really that LPL, that list is getting incredible at this very top of a global power ranking, but very deserved from that region. G2, you're seeing the good things. You are seeing Yike be this spark plug in the jungle for this team, the rookie and what he has been able to do. And Caps, this split has been that Caps that has been the leader that was necessary, the one that we were looking for at various other times where we're gauging that power level of G2. You got everybody else playing well. You got caps in that leadership power buff. Things are good for G2. And things are not as good for top esports. They had the test against BLG. There were moments, there were team fights that were good, but it was still BLG 2-0 in control. And time, time again, it feels like when TES gets that marquee matchup against one of the other premier teams in the LPL, they always come up short. They collect the wins against the weaker teams in the LPL, but can't get it done in these big matches. And that is the point of where how much can you ever really put your faith, put your stock into a team like Top Esports, where that seems to be that result. That is happening time and time again, where you build up that momentum, you build up that hype, 
to get to these matchups where we go, okay, not only is this team good, but thinking hypothetical, okay, you run through the brackets, you're gonna run into these teams that are at this type of level. That's just the landscape of the LPL. Can you get it done when you need to at the, against the sharpest of opponents? Top Esports faltering, unfortunately, is the way to look at it. And then the other thing to keep in mind with this team, seeing how the changes came through for the Asian Games roster for China, Jackie Love, he's going through some issues right now, some health issues, some other things outside the rip. All we want is the best for these players. And I think if you're top esports, you're starting to see a couple of red alarms. Take all the time, take the breaks that you need if you're Jackie Love. And I hope TES is giving him every resource that he needs. With that slight slip up, LNG, OMG both popping forward, sitting ahead of TES now. Even though LNG had the 2 0 impressive series win against OMG, was very happy to see that. That's why they're sitting at number six. But I'm still feeling very good against uh, for OMG. And honestly, outside of the big two top dogs, that third world seed right now for the LPL, I got OMG at the top of my list in terms of teams I want going. You better believe it. The boy, your man, Sanji, he's got to get to the world stage. We need Come Kasanji on. on the stage, you know? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Bro, show him. If he's there and he's doing that and Showmaker's there for the LCK, that's mental boom instant right there for that one. I love having these two squads here at this point, kind of leapfrogging over what we have seen in top esports. Of course, LNG, you're starting to see that power come through that we want to see. Starting to see Gala look a little bit more comfortable with the team. That is important when you're, uh, you're figuring out what their power level, what their strength is going to be. When you're looking at these top teams in the LPL, which OMG happens to be one of those top teams right now in the LPL. Good to get that bounce, the result against them. And for OMG, it's nothing where you're super concerned about them. I still think this is a squad that has shown us in the consistency and the power level that they should be considered in this type of tier. And, you know, both those squads potential to maybe even make a finals run if they're, again, still not early, but... Still plenty of regular season left, but they have the potential. They have the talent to make a deep run at this summer playoffs into the top five, which surprisingly are the same top five as last week. Obviously, massive caveat asterisk by T1 now because, yes, Baker did not play the series against DRX. They get 2 0 and now T1 becomes incredibly difficult to judge. Faker's going to be missing at least two weeks. We know they're going to put in all their resources to make sure that he is happy and healthy. That's all we and any of the fans want is the GOAT feeling good, playing at his best, and being healthy. I, I don't know how we judge this team going forward now when Faker's not going to be playing. It's incredibly tough, and I think that... I'm very thankful that we get it coming on this day, the power ranking, that we can get this little escape, even if there is that loss for T1 and that kind of that cloud that appears over the organization and over this next couple of weeks, knowing that Faker's going to be out at least for those two, and if not, possibly a little bit longer. I think nobody is looking to rush Faker back in this type of situation. This is something that even League of Legends all remove anyone would be looking at in a life type of uh, equation and saying okay you got to take it carefully got to be proper about this to help yourself have better years in the future that's all we want for the unkillable demon king so we want him back happy and healthy at the right time for t1 but as far as the rest of this landscape goes and what is capable it's hard because you look at that loss and you go yeah no faker okay so we're not you know it lessens it down a little bit but you're still looking at the names on this t1 lineup Guma, Kyria, Owner, Zeus, that is still strong enough, and especially against a squad like DRX, where that expectation has to be maintained that you are going to perform like T1. We did not see that today. Yeah, they should still be beating the bottom five teams in the LCK with that core. Without Kyria, we'll swap in mid. That, to me, that's only oh. going to do more damage to the squad. If he wants to have fun, sure, but... I mean, come on, we can do that in ARAM. You can do that in all these other type of things, Carrier. Don't need to do this to yourself on that LCK stage. Stay locked in. Stay focused where you are. Faker will be back in time. It doesn't matter what seed they're getting into playoffs as, as long as Faker is hopefully happy and healthy to return for that playoff run. KT still sitting pretty. Just the roller coaster's going along pretty steady at 7-1. And, and Gen G. 
quietly still a perfect 8-0 in the LCK. We get Gen G and T1 rematch in the weekend, and that's a lose-lose for Gen G. You beat them, you say, great, Faker wasn't playing. You lose, you say, ah, you lost to T1 without Faker? Oh, man, lose-lose for Gen G, the win-win for T1. You go, ah, Faker wasn't here, no problem. You beat Gen G without Faker. Oh, that's oh, a different power okay. level. <laughs> Certainly one of those type of ones. And if you're looking at KT Rollster, what the heck happened? This is the world's most boring roller coaster. This thing only goes up. What's going on, my I, man? I'm worried that that's going to come for a lethal crash around the world championship qualifying. But hopefully not, because we love seeing what KT's been put for forward. Then we, again, we got to separate these rankings because JDG and BLG. They don't even deserve to be on the same board anymore as now. It's gotten to the point for JDG at least where they don't have a 3K gold lead at 15 minutes. And we're like, well, what's wrong with JDG? The game's not over at 20 minutes. Is something off? We got the VIP, the bouncers, the bodyguards making sure you get into this top five type of section. And then we got a whole other gold and velvet room all the way upstairs. And that is the JDG and BLG lounge right now. Yes, nobody is touching these squads. The way that they play, the domination, you go through. And I mean, I love this right now because the LPL's TikTok account, which shout out, is the best, most fun, crazy, stupid edits of possible. I love watching it. They've got so many highlights to choose through. For both of these teams, you're rolling through, you're seeing Ruler pop off into something incredible. Then we're getting Bin making 1v4s and Elk, all these things. This is the peak right now at the top of the LPL, these two squads. And if you wanna watch dominant, vicious, fun League of Legends, I promise you, you will not be disappointed tuning into either one of these squads. Historically, if you isolated either one of these teams in a single split, you'd say this is one of the most dominant splits a team has ever had in the LPL. And we got two of them doing it at the same time. I'm still brought back to just the feeling of looking at, you know, what we had last year in the LCK. Historic regular seasons from T1 and Gen G back to back. And it wasn't enough against the LPL. Then we look at the retooling in spring and feeling like, okay, the LCK is strong. They're coming into this event. And JDG and VLG do what they do there at MSI. And they don't miss a beat as they pick up in the most intense schedule ever in League of Legends history. And what is going on in the LPL right now cannot say enough good things about both of these squads and at the top of our power rank. They're making the third, fourth, fifth teams in the LPL look a little silly because, you know, OMG, LNG, TES, they're great. I think world-class international level teams. But the gap is so big between the top two that it makes the LPL look like a two-team region. You get lost because you're used to talking about these other regions and their teams being strong and impressed by them and the type of power levels. And then you get, you know, a shell slam by these two that are coming in with so much results, so much power, so much authority that you have to give that respect. You have to just be in wonder and awe of what is possible for both of these teams. I just say, enjoy it. Soak it all in, love these games, love these players and what they're doing. Have the time of your life. BLG, the only thing they're hoping and praying is they don't match up against JDG at the World Championship unless it comes down to those grand finals. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you. Beautiful people. Thanks for watching as always, and we'll catch you on that flippity flip.